Hey guys, welcome back to the workbench. Today I'm going to be making these really nice leather and brass ranger beads. I'm going to be showing you how to put the brass patina on the beads as well as how to fit the beads onto the leather lace because it's a really snug fit and it's supposed to be like that. I'm not going to be going too much into the decorative knots because there's already a lot of stuff like that on YouTube already. But what are ranger beads? And well, functionally, they're just an abacus that you hang off of your backpack. And if you know how many steps it takes you to walk, say, a tenth of a mile or a tenth of a kilometer, depending on which one you prefer to use, you can use these beads to track how far you've walked in a day. And with this particular setup, you can track five miles at a time. Uh, and that's usually enough for most overland navigation. So I got these really nice brass beads off of Amazon for less than $20 for a hundred of them, and they say they're from Africa. They're certainly handmade. They're clearly made out of some sort of heavy gauge brass that was then hammered, hand hammered into a toroid, which is like a donut shape, which in this case makes it look like a bead. But uh, you're going to need 13 of them, four for the top of the abacus and nine for the bottom. You're also going to need some leather lace, deerskin suede lace works really well. You're going to need a fid for tying the decorative knots, a uh, doll needle, which can be found at any fabric store. You're going to need a file, a uh, little file to take the burrs out of the insides of these beads so they don't cut the leather. And when you use in the file, you want to make sure you turn in this direction so that the teeth bite into the bead and they don't get lodged, they don't get bound up. A torch is going to be helpful in the antiquing process. And the other thing you're going to need to do the antiquing is a can of sand. A little bit of sand in a coffee can is what I used. You could use a rock tumbler. That would actually probably work better. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is put the patina on your brass beads. And we're going to do that by heating them up. When you heat up metal, almost any metal, the surface oxidizes. And that oxidation level is going to look like, well, it's going to look up, make it look old. And then when we put it in the coffee can full of sand, we're going to take off the oxidation from the high points of the beads, leaving oxidation in the cracks and the little hammer marks and the seams and the scratches and the scuffs and things like that. And it's going to make it look old. It's going to make it look antique. And it's going to look really, really nice. What you don't want to do is get the bead or the brass in the interior of the flame. There's an interior jet and an exterior jet. You can kind of see one inside of the other here in this shot. You don't want to get it into that interior jet and if you do you don't want to get it for very long because instead of oxidizing the brass what it's going to do is it's going to deposit a lot of carbon from the flame itself onto the brass now and it's going to make the the bead irrevocably dark it's going to be super 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 dark now if you want that that's fine but we want really light high spots and really dark low spots for this particular patina and so we don't want a lot of carbon and some of it's unavoidable, but we're trying to minimize that. After you have oxidized your beads, uh, you can put them in a can of sand, or like I said, a rock tumbler, probably work better. And then you're gonna shake, 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 shake. And if you're doing this method, it's gonna take a while. You're gonna wanna do it outside because the sand kind of escapes the can a little bit. And after you've done it for probably 20 minutes, they're gonna start to look really nice. They're going to start to look antique. Now they've still got dirt on them here so you can't really tell how shiny they are but you can tell that the oxidation is gone and you've got these dark spots and light spots and you just keep doing that until you reach your desired your desired look. Now the first thing you want to do after you get the patina on your beads is find the center of your lace and you want to cut a long piece of lace about eight to a foot longer than you think you need. And then you want to tie that center so that you don't lose it while you're tying your other knots. Now right here I'm tying a decorative knot called a diamond knot. It's also got other names like Celtic button knot and so on and so forth. And it's, uh, it's a complicated knot. It's kind of fiddly. It's really pretty. Um, but it takes a long time and a lot of practice. And even when you are good at it, you also need a fid to dress the knot and make sure you move it in the right position. But any knot will do in this position. Then you want to take a doll needle and your first four beads so you can lace them onto the lace. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to lace the beads onto one of the one side first 
and then on to the other side. And we're going to do that by first stringing a string or a piece of thread or leather wax thread would work really well through the beads and then pulling them onto the leather lace with that thread. Uh, and you can see that's what I've done here. Uh, and then we're going to do essentially do the same thing on the other side, except this time there's going to be a leather lace already through those beads. And so it's going to be a little more difficult. I kind of recommend you doing these one at a time. That is the easiest way to do it. So as you can see, you want to pull the string through the beads and then use the loop in the end of the string to pull the lace through the beads. And so you go needle, needle through the beads, string through the beads, you use the needle to pull the string through the beads, and then you use the string to pull the leather through the beads. And then after you've got the leather lace pulled through each bead, you want to make sure it's not twisted up too much or wonky or, or anything like that. And that takes some doing too. That takes a little fiddling with to get uh, all that lace through each one of those beads. And it's, uh, it's a bit of a time-consuming process. I would say the whole thing took me with the patining process and the knot tying and lacing all the beads onto, onto the leather. I'd say the whole thing maybe took me, honestly, it probably took me three or four hours total. And I was working over it a couple different days, so I'm not exactly sure. And after you've got those first four beads put on, you want to start three fingers down from those beads, two or three fingers down from those beads. And if you want a really tight, really short set of ranger beads, you go one finger down from those beads. And then you want to tie another knot. Once again, any knot will do. Once again, I'm tying um, a matching decorative knot here. And, and you can see me in this shot. What I'm doing is I'm dressing the knot. I'm pulling each strand of leather through slowly systematically tightening the knot until it gets as tight as it's going to get. And eventually when it gets super tight or when it gets really snug, I have to use the fid to start doing the tightening on the knot. And um, another reason why I'm not showing and going into detail about exactly how to tie these knots is because uh, I don't really like this variation that I ended up using. Um, I learned a lot on this build about these, these diamond knots. And um, I use a different variation in, in uh, projects after this that I make. And I'm not super happy with that one either. So that's another reason why I'm not doing a knot tutorial in this video is because I, I don't personally, it's not my favorite version of the knot. It looks really nice. Um, it's just a, a few little minor things could be different. Um, and if you guys want to, obviously put in the comments and I'll do a tutorial on just how to make that knot and I'll probably do it in lace or, or something like that. You could also make this whole project out of pony beads, plastic pony beads, and paracord, and that's what a lot of guys do. But I thought it would be interesting and unique and original to do it with leather and brass, and I also thought it would look a lot nicer. Here I am putting the rest of the beads on, and I'm doing, I'm doing too many at a time. Um, well, th three's not bad. Um, but in, I did a lot of practice for this video, and I found that, that three was kind of the max you want to fool with. It's, it's better to do two or one at a time. It's a lot less frustrating, and it takes more time, but it's just a lot less fiddly. Uh, when I was trying to do too much at a time, I, I probably ended up, I may have ended up taking longer doing it like that than I would have just doing it one at a time. But you know me, I'm very impatient. <laughs> I always try to bite off more than I can chew. It's just how I am. And uh, projects like this teach me how to be a lot more patient. And this project took a lot longer than I thought it would to film it and everything. It, it wouldn't have taken even remotely as long if I hadn't filmed everything. Uh, but here I'm going to, I'm actually going to show you how I push the string through every, all nine of the beads at once. And um, this actually doesn't, doesn't turn out so bad. This went really smooth. Uh, one thing that I noticed in later projects with these beads, oh, I tied a little stop knot there just to make sure none of those beads fell off as I was pushing the needle through the previous ones. 
One thing I noticed later on is that some of these beads had really big burrs inside. They also had like really bad places where leather and the lace would catch and I was I was making a little bracelet later and I, I kept breaking the lace and I noticed one of the beads had a big burr in it. So you gotta be careful of that kind of stuff with handmade items that each each one is a little bit different. So what you wanna do here is you wanna pull one bead out by itself separate from the other beads. Now the string is still going through all nine beads. You just got that one separated so that you can pull the leather lace through through it. And see, I learned my lesson here. I started doing them one at a time after I got the string pulled through all of them. And so now I can just methodically go through and pull each individual bead, or pull the leather, lace the leather through each individual bead one at a time and this takes, it's not that bad, and you get a rhythm to it, and it's a lot of fun. It's very relaxing. And you go through and you pull each one through, and you also want to make sure that you're not getting your lace twisted up too badly. Um, and you don't, you don't actually have a lot of chances to do this either, because as you pull the lace through each bead, it's, it's really tight, and you want it to be tight, otherwise you won't be able to pull the beads from one end of the abacus to the other without them just falling right back down, and then you don't you don't have a record of how far you've walked anymore if the beads slide around too freely. So you want it to be you want the beads to be really snug on the cordage, whatever you're using for cordage. But you also don't want them to be eating up the cordage either. So you want it you want the lace you don't want any twists or knots in the lace, and then as you're as you're working these beads onto the lace, as you're pulling them through, you're, you're putting a lot more stress on the leather than it's going to be subject to in use. And so if you pull the beads on and off the leather lace too many times, it will break. If you have a bead that has a, the hole that's too small, it'll break the lace. Uh, and then if you have a bead with a hole that's too big, then it's going to slide around too much. And so some care needs to be taken in the selection of the beads. I had a hundred beads and um, probably eight out of 10 of them, which would be four out of five, four out of five beads were actually good for this project. As I'd go through, some holes would be really big. Some holes would be very jagged. Some would be too small. So I went through and I had to pick the right, <coughs> excuse me. I went through and I had to pick the right beads for the project. Here I am putting on the last, uh, the last bead, uh, pulling the last bead through the leather. So after I get that last bead on there and I get the lace untwisted out from under it, take the stop knot out, I'm going to tie one more knot at the bottom to retain the last nine beads. And I'm not going to go all into that. And there it is, the final product. A beautiful set of antique brass ranger beads on leather lace. All that's left to do is to trim off the excess. And when you do that, you wanna leave yourself an inch or so. You want something to grab onto at the end there when you're pulling the beads back up. But that's it. I think it looks really nice. It came out, I mean, it came out about as good as I expected, <laughs> to be honest. They look beautiful, and up close, there you can really see how the the oxidation stayed inside the crevices, even with the sand. I mean, the sand particles are really small, and you think they'd you think they would get the oxidation out of the cracks, but I don't know. I don't know why they don't. They don't. And you see on one of those beads on top there, I got it too close to the flame, and it's been carbonized, and the carbon never came off. But all in all, it looks really nice, and that loop at the top was left on there so that you could attach these very easily to your backpack, or really anything, you know, any part of whatever you're using. And you hang them on your front right there, and as you're traveling, every time, most people take, what is it, like between 50 and 70 steps to go a tenth of a mile or a kilometer, and for every tenth of a unit that you go, you pull down one of the bottom beads, and when you pull down all nine of the bottom beads, 
you go another tenth, you pull down one of the top beads, and that's a full mile or a full kilometer. And you do that four more times, five more times, four more times, and you get five miles. And that's how you use these. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I really appreciate you taking the time with me. And uh, stop next time for my next video. Should be good. Have a great day.